Welcome, fellow metalheads, to the GWN Metal Podcast. My name is Mike, and in this episode, we will be exploring one of my favorite subgenres of extreme metal, which spawned in the late 80s to early 90s, called Blackened Thrash. To better understand this subgenre, we're going to have to zoom into that golden era of thrash and the early beginnings of black metal to see where the fusion of these genres gave way to its own subgenre. The 80s are dubbed as the golden era of thrash metal, where an explosion of both new bands and essential classic albums were created. At this time, the most famous bands in the genre were American, had a fairly decent production value and impressive playing chops. Lyrically, thrash has always included social political criticism or simply the love of speedy riffs and partying. However, what's interesting is that bands outside of America, i.e. Europe and Latin America, had a darker sound baked into them. Both the guitar tones and grittier production value made the recording sound more raw and primitive. Another important point is that the vocal delivery was much more aggressive than their American counterparts. The final ingredient that sowed the seeds of black and thrash was the deviation of the typical lyrical content into more of a discussion of Satanism, war, and death. This introduction of darker themes began with the iconic first wave of black metal in Europe. This group of bands are said to have influenced the creation of the true black metal genre from the early 90s, but did not characterize themselves as anything other than extreme metal at the time. This sound was aggressive, also used a stripped down production style, and had a distinct image to its band members. And yes, we are talking about corpse paint, spikes, and bullet belts. Once we hit the early 90s, where the black metal genre had its own quote-unquote golden era explosion of bands and classic album releases, we can more clearly see where bands that mix thrash and black metal took inspiration from. Influences from the European and Latin American thrash scene from the 80s include early Sepultura, early Sodom, Destruction, and actually we can add early Slayer and Sarcophago here as well for argument's sake. Combine these influences from the first wave of black metal like Venom, Bathory, and Hellhammer, and now we get the perfect storm to create black and thrash as its own subgenre. Again, I must reiterate that all the bands I just mentioned didn't set out to explicitly create black and thrash music, but rather the push towards darker themes and playing more aggressively at the time gave way to the ingredients that are today known to characterize black and thrash bands. If you're interested in diving deeper into this history, Sam Dunn and the crew at Banger TV have a Lockhorns episode on this topic from earlier this year. All right, so now zooming back out and into modern day, we now have bands that purposely fit into this genre and are adding interesting flavors to that old school sound. The most straightforward band to do this genre at a high level is Aura Noir from Norway. Similarly, Furious and Dark, we have the Swedish band Nifelheim. Two bands that incorporate more atmosphere and groove worth mentioning are Destroyer 666 from Australia and Goat Horror from the US. There are plenty of bands across the globe that play with the ratio between thrash and black metal. Some even infuse punk elements like the earlier bands we discussed. So now the question is, what are Canadian bands contributing to this subgenre? Well, to answer that, we first need to have a word from our sponsor, which is this dark beer. I mean, we can't talk about thrash without beer, right? <sighs> Tastes like the void. All right, so I have selected four bands to share with you today, which all showcase the diversity which exists even within such a niche subgenre. Links to the Bandcamp pages will be in the description below. 
So starting off with that old school sound, we have Acid Cross. This duo hails from Ottawa, Ontario, and strives to capture that raw, live off the floor vibe as they play their blend of black metal, D-beat, and thrash. With an emphasis on straightforward riffing, which doesn't sacrifice melody for speed, Acid Cross have been consistent since their 2014 inception, despite a major lineup change midway through their career. Their impeccably titled 2020 EP, Dungeon Thrash, is undoubtedly their most ambitious release to date, which expands in both complexity and aggression. One of the most interesting concepts used is the longer format songs that act as a sort of double bill or two songs stitched together by a particular musical groove. Most songs in the band's catalog barely reach the three minute mark, but now we are graced with songs that exceed six minutes. This allows the band to add more ideas into the mix, like solos, breakneck speed sections, and more atmospheric elements. Take the track Flame of the End slash Evil Crusaders, which is arguably the most evil sounding off the EP. It contains a catchy groove which morphs between the two segments to create just enough distinction without feeling disjointed. Each segment contains its own solo and instrumental section that give me early Slayer vibes, which is always a good thing in my book. And the finale brings a disturbing cacophony of disembodied voices for that extra touch of evil. If you're looking for that Venom-esque sound, Acid Cross is the pick for you. I'd also recommend the opening track, Symptom of Man slash Bound by Oppression. Now, if you turn up the black metal, thrash, and crust punk elements up a few notches in production and brutality, you get Black Rat, who hail from Calgary, Alberta. The trio formed in 2012 and have three full lengths and two demos under their belt. They produce a varied mix of songs throughout each release, which keeps their sound interesting. By this, I mean that every release ebbs and flows between tracks that are straight rippers and others that lead into more of a mid-tempo black metal vibe. To some listeners, this may sound a bit disjointed at times, but if you're a sucker for dynamic music like me, I think you'll enjoy what Black Rat is creating. I want to highlight my favorite album of theirs, which is called Hail to Hades and was released in 2016. Right off the bat, what grabs me is the duo vocals that strike a perfect balance between the black metal and crust punk style. The delivery goes well with the album's lyrical content, which of course depicts blasphemy and rituals, which are written in a punchy prose and are fully enjoyable. Next is the mixing of the album. Every instrument's grimy tones are balanced well, which allow you to isolate every instrument you want to focus on. Yet, it sounds rich and full when consumed as a whole. One of the best songs on the album is called Sepulchral Lust. It opens up with a traditional tremolo picking riff before sending you into a thrash attack, which includes the main riff of the song. A key differentiator of this song is the inclusion of a great solo and these chaotic drum parts sprinkle across the track. A close second favorite song you should check out is the closing track, Autumnal Obeisance. Mixing old school thrash influences like Sodom and Sadis with the darkness of modern bands like Destroyer 666 and The Chasm, my third pick is Twilight Hammer. They replace the punky elements of the earlier bands with death metal, which is quite unique in this specific subgenre. Originally a one-man project led by John Insidious in 2006, it has evolved to become a four-piece of seasoned musicians from Ontario. They strive to create uncompromisingly brutal music with the intent of not being formulaic in their approach. With only two full lengths and two demos to their name, the band are an underground gem. Their unrelenting sound is characterized by an old school production, a balance between blazing riffs and cold atmosphere, and a lyrical focus on war from some of fantasy's most beloved characters. Fun fact here, the band's latest album, Taken by the Others, 
was set to be released in 2010 rather than 2019. The nine-year gap, however, allowed the band to solidify their lineup, garner support from a label, and tweak certain parts of the music. The final product is nothing short of epic and contains no mediocre songs. The album kicks off with an eight-minute epic with Game of Thrones themed lyrics, and later you can see themes span from The Wild Hunt, Greek mythology, Doctor Who, and of course, Lord of the Rings. Yes, I know that sounds pretty nerdy, but uh, as soon as you hear the musicianship, it all makes sense. It works out. The closing track, Wayward Son of Gondor, encapsulates the band's sound at the highest level. This is a nine minute piece that has a dark atmosphere, catchy riffs, and unrelenting thrash sections. It also has some of the best bass playing on the album. Towards the final part of the song, the band goes into a sorrowful sounding black metal groove, which complements the death scene shown by the lyrics. In the background, the bass plays intricate scales that add to the crescendo of the moment. The two other honorable mentions I'll let you discover on your own are called The Undead Strike and Until the Stars Are Conquered. My final pick for you guys is both the newest band and the most modern sounding of the four. Disastra is a four piece from Montreal, Quebec and originally formed in 2014. Taking inspiration from bands like Watain, Dissection, Megadeth and Skeleton Witch, these guys are all about playing fast and evil while incorporating the right amount of melody to keep things fresh. Although they have a much more black metal forward riffing style, the frequent gang vocals on choruses and modern sounding thrash breaks make for a dynamic listening experience. With only an EP and a full length under their belt so far, we'll be diving into their 2019 release, Elder Sun. The single, Ve Victus, is a standout track from the album as its smart composition incorporates all of the critical elements of a modern sounding black metal song and these are done at a very high level. There's even a fun music video you can check out. Highlighting a deeper cut, however, the song Morning Wars has unique elements that I didn't really expect, and it really showcases the band's creativity. The song starts with a fairly simple beat and riffing pattern, but then quickly morphs into a whole new beast, which throws in the most black metal groove of the album, in my opinion. The thrash is also very well done and captivates the mid portion of the song. The creativity shines with the transitions between these two different sections. Whether it's a tribalistic sounding drum fill, a death metal inspired bridge, or a solo, this track has a lot going for it. The honorable mentions here will be the song Gnosis, which is a much more thrash heavy sound. So four black and thrash bands, four distinct blends of old school and new school approaches to the music, but definitely all worth checking out. Truthfully, Canada does not have many bands that explicitly fit into this subgenre. However, there's always the possibility of younger bands to carry the flame of this specific sound within metal history. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this subgenre. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Maybe you're indifferent. Uh, maybe I missed uh, one of your favorite underground bands. So let me know in the comments below on YouTube or connect with me on Instagram at gwn.metal. And now go forth and check out Acid Cross, Black Rat, Twilight Hammer, and Disastra on Bandcamp to continue supporting your local metal scene. This is Mike from GWN Metal. Thanks for tuning in.